having trouble with the radar, sir. It appears to be jammed. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Reapers. Today, I'd like to do a short demo on the jamming system for the F4E. Although the Air Force and Navy and other services had multiple jammers that they could install on the aircraft. For DCS, the only jammer we'll have is the ANALQ-131. This jammer can only be fixed to stations 2, 4, or 8. Although we can have multiple jammers installed, this does not increase the effectiveness of the jamming. Therefore, you only need one to be installed. The jammers are controlled in the cockpit at the WISO station using the control panel located on the right sub-panel. Notice the positions. We have an off, a standby, transmit, one, and both. There are two transmit modes for the jamming system in the F4, neither of which are differentiated and would normally be assigned depending on the mission profile. For the purposes of DCS, when you turn the system on, both jamming profiles will be operating simultaneously. The jammer has a three minute warm up time, so anytime you'll have turn the switch system back to off or you have an electrical system failure, it will require an additional three minutes of warm up before the system is activated. The jamming system should not be activated on the ground because of radiation hazards to ground crew members. Doesn't really apply in DCS. And because of the heating requirements, should only be operated for 20 minutes at a time during flight. Although in certain circumstances, such as low level flight, where the air is denser, you may be able to operate it for up to 30 minutes. To demonstrate the capabilities of the jamming system, I'm going to fly a two sorties. Both sorties will be flown against an SA-3 battery in uh, expert mode. Both sorties will be flown at 24,500 feet at approximately 0.86 Mach directly to the battery, which is at waypoint 1. The first sortie, we will not employ the uh, uh, jammer. Things to take note of is when the uh, system detects our aircraft, when it launches, and when we'll... Uh, and when we will have a uh, missile impact. So it looks like uh, we're detected at 25 miles. And I will fast forward the uh, demo until we get missile launch. Missile launch at about 11 and a half miles. And, and missile impact at seven and a half miles. The second sortie will be identical to the first, again at 24,500 feet, approximately 0.86, headed to the SAM site location, which is waypoint one, currently 34 miles out. The only difference is, is I will be using the jamming system. So call up Jester Interface, Systems, Jammer, and Transmit. Okay. If I jump to the back seat, I can see that Jester has put both panels into the jamming mode, even though we only have uh, one system attached. And we got uh, acquisition at about 24 miles, same as the first sortie. I will be speeding up the sortie to the point when we have missile launch. Missile launch at 11 and a half miles. And a miss. We got a finger right on our nose. SA3. A second launch. And that one hit about uh, three and a half miles off. So you can see that the uh, system had partial effectiveness against GSA-3. I found that the jammer is not particularly effective against SA-2 or SA-6 sites. Uh, you would have to experiment to find out the real capabilities of the system. Well, I hope this has been 
of some help. Have a good day. Push out.